In the last video, we started looking at linear programming. As we can see in this particular case, we've got a range of constraints. So for example, x plus 2y is less or equal to 500. When we've got two decision variables, so in this case, x and y, we can represent our linear programming problem graphically. In this video, we're going to look at some of the basics of graphing inequalities and finding what we would call the feasible region. So let's start off with a nice straightforward case. We're asked to represent the following inequalities graphically. We're asked to label the region bounded by these inequalities R. So these might be the constraints of a linear programming problem. The first one is a strict inequality. 2x plus 3y is strictly greater than 18. So we can't include this in our inequality. When we're graphing these and we can't include them, we used a broken line. The next one, y is strictly greater than x, so again a broken line. On this one right here, y is less or equal to 5. On this one, we'd have a solid line, and then we've got x and y are going to be greater or equal to 0. What I'm going to do is graph the first line. I'm going to graph 2x plus 3y is equal to 18. Now, a couple of different ways that you could do this. The first way you could do it is to write it in the form y is equal to mx plus c. The second way is to set x to naught and solve for y, and then set y to naught and solve for x. That's the method that I'm going to take. So let's consider now a suitable scale for my coordinate axis. So I'm going to put the coordinate axis on like so. Um, often you'll be given these, or you might have to do them yourself. I'm going to do this one myself. Now we're told that x and y are going to be greater or equal to zero. That means that I can start the origin down here. Okay, so my origin is going to be just here. So let's consider now a suitable scale. The method that I'm going to use for the first line right now is the 2x, and I'll write this just here, we're going to have 2x plus 3y is equal to 18. This will give me some idea of a scale that I can use for my inequalities. So if x is equal to naught, 3 lots of y is 18. So we could say now, uh, when x is naught, let's just scribble this, when x is equal to 0, uh, 3y is equal to 18. Therefore, we can see that y is going to be given a 6. So what we'd have is this point, 0, 6. Okay, when now y is equal to 0, we can see that 2x will be equal to 18. Therefore, we can see that we're going to have the point now, x is 9, y is 0. So we'll have those. So these are the, this is the one I'm going to focus my scale on. Because quite clearly, all of these are fairly straightforward. y is going to be less or equal to 5. It's going to be below this. And then we can draw the line y is equal to x. So what I'm going to do here, let's just put these on. I'm going to go up. And the bigger I make this, the easier it's going to be to see my feasible region. So let's just go up. And I'm going to let's just put some, a scale on here. What I'm going to have then, we're going to have now, that'll be 1, that'll be 2, uh, we'll go for 3, we'll go for 4, we'll go for 5, we'll go for 6, 7, then 8, 9 and 10. Now when it comes to my feasible region, when I'm going to be looking for possible solutions that satisfy a linear programming problem such as this, the half points are not going to make it easy if I'm looking for integer solutions, but purely based on the fact that I want this to be as visible as possible, I'm choosing my scale to be quite big. So let's do this, let's put our scale on and we can just put some values. So let's go here, this is the x-axis, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay, let's go for this one, we'll have 1, we'll have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So that looks, that looks fine, we'll fit all of this on. So let's first consider, and I'm going to draw this line right here. I'm going to draw this line and that is going to be 2x plus 3y is equal to 80. So let's pick the two points that it goes through. And this is why I prefer doing it to the, the y is equal to mx plus c gradient inset method. All I'm going to do is pop this one just here and put that there. And then I'm going to choose the other one, which is going to be just here. OK, and I'm going to get my dash line. So my broken line and put that through those two points. So that's going to look give or take something like so. What I'm now going to do is label this up, and it's absolutely hugely important that you label this up. Later on, when we start looking at these problems, you will see that the intersection of two lines can lead to an optimal solution. So you'll be solving simultaneous equations, and if you haven't put which line it is, and you've got three or four, it can become a bit of a nightmare. 
So what I'm going to do is say that this is going to be 2x plus 3y is equal to 18, and that is my line just there, okay? So that's labelled up. We now need to consider which region we want. Do we want above the line or below the line? Sometimes it's blindingly obvious, but I like to test a point. So if we pick the origin, naught, naught, and sub it in, if we consider, is two lots of naught plus three lots of naught greater than 18? Well, quite clearly it isn't. Therefore, we exclude the region now that we shade below the line. By convention, in this particular uh, the module that we're doing, D1, we shade below the line if we are excluding. So what we're excluding from our feasible region, which we're going to look at shortly, is shaded out. So you're going to shade this out. Yours is obviously going to be a lot nicer because you're going to have a pen and pencil. I'm working now with this thick or fat pen and it's not brilliant. So that's what we do. Values on that line are excluded. Remember, that's a strict inequality. My shading isn't brilliant, but hopefully you can appreciate the broken line means that we exclude all values that sit on that line. So they can't form part of a possible solution to our linear programming problem. So that one's done. That one's sorted. So let's just get a shot of that. And we can put that one on. Okay, now the next one, we've got that y is going to be strictly greater than x. So let's just write this here. y is equal to x. And we're going to draw this line. Now that one, again, we need a dashed or broken line. And that's just this line right here. We should know that one. We should recognize that one. y is equal to x. Let's see if I can get this looking a bit more accurate. And that will do something like so. So it's not going to be absolutely bang on because my computer and my eyes aren't brilliant but it'll give us some idea let's just put that there that looks about right doesn't it that looks pretty good uh let's see that is that going for all of the points yeah we'll live with that for now again the more accurate you do this the easier it will be to find now your feasible region and possible solutions so let's go ahead and write that this is y is equal to x now again we need to test a point so if we tested a point let me just pick a point it might be blindingly obvious to you, but if I pick this point now, we've got 0, 10. The question is, is the y coordinate bigger than the x coordinate? Well, quite clearly, 10 is bigger than 0. Therefore, this is included in our region, and we want to exclude this side of the line. So what we'll do is exclude this side of the line. So shading up, remember that line is not included. It's a broken line. So we're going to now just shade like so and do this. And then come down like so, like so, like so, and just tidy that up. I appreciate that I'm going off the uh, this part. I just like it to look like a straight line. Um, and we'll come down here and do all of that. So let's kill all of that. Let's get rid of that. We don't want that. That is not included in our feasible region. Therefore, we will get shot. So bear with me as I'm just shading out. It's not the, the most... Uh, interesting thing to watch but hopefully it'll give you an idea of what we are doing so there we go that's our line y is equal to x we've looked at that inequality so let's just do that y is equal to x so now all we're left with are values that are going to be in this white area that's what what's left of our feasible region and let's just put that one there okay let's now look at the next one y is going to be less or equal to five so this is just a straight line, and we're going to draw the line y is equal to 5. Now, this is included, 5 is included, so we go back to using now, or we start using, I should say, rather than go back, because we never used it, we start using now the solid line. So that's a solid line. We'll label this up, and we'll have now that we've got here that y, so let's put this on, y is equal now. In fact, I'll put it at 6. I want it at 5, don't I? Let's put it at 5. We want it just there. That's five. Uh, there we go. That's better rather than six. Let's grab that up and move that down. So let's put that on. So y is going to be less or equal to five. Straight line across. Y is five. Now let's consider values. Uh, uh, if this isn't blindly obvious, um, I, well, it is really, isn't it? You know, we want all values of five or less. That's below the line quite clearly. So all we're going to do is shave that out. And we'll get shot of this. So all values now that are above that line. Remember, this line is in included. This time we've got it included. So let's do that. And then we're going up here and up here. Okay. So up we come and then across. Let's go across. 
something like that and then we can shade all of this in and all of this across. Now what we can see here is that I've created what we call a feasible region. The next two inequalities, x is greater than naught and y is greater than naught, are simply my x and y coordinate axis. And that accounts for those two inequalities. By merely drawing what I've drawn here, it means that we've got the constraint of non-negativity. And that's what I spoke about in the last thing. So we've just drawn that. Let's just go ahead and do that one. And then we can see, now let's just tidy that up. Our coordinate axis provide us now, if we just think about the next one, our coordinate axis provide us with this non-negativity constraint. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and label this now. This is the region R. So if we had a linear programming problem that had these particular constraints, what we would do is look at solutions in here. So let's just look at two uh, functions. So what we looked at before were the functions, the objective functions. One of them might be to maximize profit. So let's just put a max. So maximize profit. Profit might be equal to, let's say 2x. Let's just make something up. 2x plus 3y. We can say x is the number of, uh, we'll go, let's make this really interesting, black tables. Okay. And then y is equal to the number of white tables. Okay, that's really interesting, isn't it? So let's put that there. So that's an example. This might be our objective function to maximize now the profit. So all we would do is find, and remember, these are going to have to be integer solutions as we can't have 2.5 black tables. I don't want to be sitting on half a black table or resting against one anyway. So let's go here. Now, one disadvantage of making my scale big is that I've got half values. And that means that when I'm looking at these, it often looks like I've got integer solutions. Now, what we can do is look at values that are in this region. So if I first look at this one right here, that's in. OK, and that is 2 comma 5. Now, what this would say is that I'm going to have 2 of the black and then 5 of the white. So what would that give me? That would give me a profit of 19. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 5 is 15. So that would give me 19. Now, of course, we could go to this one and we could have 3, 5, which is quite clearly going to yield a bigger profit. Uh, we could go to this one. What's that one going to be? 4, 5. Now, we couldn't go to this one, which is going to be 5-5, five, five, as 5 is not included, as it's on this broken line. So these are all integer solutions that satisfy this inequality. Now, as we go on later, we'll look at more specific uh, methods of testing for an optimal solution or solutions. As you can see, the further we move away and out of this region, the better it is in terms of maximising profit. And that's what we'll look at. We'll look at a ruler test. And what we're trying to do is, is essentially look at these vertexes and decide which is the best for us. Now, if this instead was a cost function, so our objective was a cost to minimise cost, OK, so let's look at uh, minimising. And we said that the cost was, for example, let's say, uh, let's go for 5x plus 2y. OK, and we wanted to minimise this. If we consider now, what we'd be doing is looking for the lowest one. So we'd be over this side of the region. And again, later on, we'll look at more sophisticated methods of doing that. But you can see now, in the feasible region, I've got these integer solutions. Now, the integers, because I was dealing with tables here, if it's something else, for example, if this was ours, then we could have half hours and we could pop, we could find now some values that would satisfy this. So, you know, we might be told that we can actually use half hours and then we can jump to all of these values just here. So that one would be good. Uh, we could have that one. We could have that one. And what we do is look to minimise. And minimising this now, we could come here, we could look at these and we could look at that one. OK, that one's not going to be a mess. I'm assuming that's over the line just there. So what we would do is start to look at it and we will, as stated, we'll go on to see now with vertex uh, testing, which are the best ones to find an optimal solution or solutions. So there we go. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how we can use these now. Uh, to solve our linear programming problems. So all we've done is graph these on. We found a feasible region. We're testing points in here manually at the moment to either maximise profit in this particular case or minimise cost. Quite clearly, if we were dealing with integer values, this is the best one to minimise the cost. And then this one right here is the best one to maximise profit. Uh, so there we go. That's, that's the basic idea. Um, so in the next few videos, we'll look at solving some problems graphically and we'll find the constraints. So as we did in the last one, we'll find the constraints, we'll set them up and then go on to solve.